So time now is 8, 10 p.m. on Friday the 28th. So let's get into what we're doing. So it's been kind of a crazy week. We've had a lot going on. And I know your big question is about this appeal. So we've always said to you that the mayor most likely would appeal. Um, I was really hopeful that he wouldn't. I mean, if you get beat by a group of retirees nine times in court, don't you think common sense would say, man, I'm getting my ass handed to me. I probably shouldn't keep going at this. Hey, Scott, howdy. <laughs> uh, that's say if I got my butt kicked many times, but um but today uh, last night at midnight was the deadline we hadn't seen anything hadn't heard anything but we were waiting hopefully to see whether or not it would come and of course the attorneys opened their mail this morning and there it was so um we've received some press statements about it and uh, it came out in politico pro yesterday there was even comment in the daily news i think about it so they filed, but it was expected. Our attorneys expected them to file, not that that they this was just going to go away. And we've always said that just because we've won doesn't mean that it's over because the mayor has the ability to appeal to this next level, right? So you have the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeals of First Department, and then you have the New York State Court of Appeals, the highest court in the state. We always knew that they had two levels of appeals. We've been saying it. This is why we keep saying we have to fundraise, 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 because we now are, have four oral arguments ahead of us. And let's lay that out. OK, so the very first case is the Campion case, right? That case is the 12-126 case. Is what is 12-126? What is it? What is what does the city have to pay up to when they say that the city will pay up to the HIP HMO for every employee retiring their dependent? What is the HIP rate? What is what is the HIP HMO? What is the benchmark? That is that case. We won in the Supreme Court before Judge Frank. We won in the appeals court, um, first department with the five judges, right? Mayor lost second time. He can make leave for appeal, ask the New York State Court of Appeals, the highest court in the state. Can you hear the appeal? I think the two courts below screwed up. That's basically what they're saying. They did that. We didn't think it would get accepted because it was a unanimous decision against the mayor. Yet two of the seven judges, at least two of the seven, have to say, hmm, I think that's interesting. I want to try and listen to that case. And then they hear it. So that case will be calendared sometime in the fall, like maybe September, October. You know, we might hear about that in August somewhere, August, September. But that's the Campion case. So that's one oral argument. It's at the highest level of appeal. The second case is the copay case. Um, we are before two courts, the Supreme Court in part of that argument. And we're also in the court, the uh, appeals court, first department, for the second part, because the city and the and Emblem Health, who were also suing on that, uh, appealed the decision to certify it as a class action. That's two more oral arguments. So now you're up to three. The fourth case is the Bentkowski case. That is the nuclear option case. Um, that case, the mayor lost in Supreme Court before Judge Frank. He lost in the appeals court, first department. And now, um, hello, John. Uh, and now he's going, he's made leave for appeal, requesting the high court. Hey, I got my butt handed to me ninth time. <laughs> Will you please listen that the two courts below screwed up? You know, so those are your four oral arguments that are now pending in three different cases. For those DC 37 retirees who are on the DC 37 call, the administrator who took over the DC 37 Retirees Association is incorrect. Uh, she only said that there's two cases. There's actually three cases because she forgot the copay case. And there's two arguments before in that copay case. There are a total of three lawsuits. There's four oral arguments pending across two different courts. So you can feel free to correct her. Uh, but... That is the facts on the on the court cases. Um, what else have you got? Got questions? Can someone stop him from spending the city's money? Well, it's actually the taxpayers' money, but 
No, he's entitled. Um, we just were going to put out a statement today. We were putting out some statements to different reporters that messaged us like, hey, do you have a statement on this? And basically our statement is, well, if the mayor wants to continue to, you know, waste to ta his time and the taxpayers money, you know, lose fighting, losing battles on trying to claw back health care from the retirees, uh, the senior citizens, the disabled 9-11 responders and widows in a failed illegal attempt. I mean, heck. Go ahead. We'll just keep fighting you. So, so that's that. Um, so yes, we just need to keep going. We need to keep doing what we're doing. We need to keep fighting back and, uh, and fundraising our own litigation because clearly no one's helping us. We are still working on bringing in the city and the state litigation uh, legislation back. The state legislation we can't bring back until January. City, we're hopefully coming back real soon with that. We are paying for the litigation on boats. I know you're paying in taxes and you're paying here. I know. Ruth, I don't know why you don't have video or sound. I've, I am streaming this on three different devices here and I could see me all over. So you might want to check your uh, internet wherever you are. Um, the MLC. Uh, so we're working on seeing what we can bring out to you on that. Um, the statement we put out was, you know, we're thankful that Michael Mulgrew of the United Federation of Teachers walked back his support on the Medicare Advantage. Uh, it is my opinion that that walk back is primarily um, symbolic. Okay, Inez, I see your your messaging. She says, Marianne, I've been posting for donations on the pissed off teacher site. Appeals for donations must be posted more often. Many people are on vacation and need to see the need. Okay, and then I'm sending out an email again tonight as well. And we're going to start a monthly campaign, uh, which we'll probably put out next week, start in July. Um, but so Michael Mulgrew's walk back was, I believe, in my opinion, was largely symbolic. It has real, no real teeth to it. They can't do anything um, to stop the Medicare Advantage plan because they would be putting themselves at jeopardy for an improper practice, right? That means that they rolled those MLC agreements, those really bad agreements into their contracts. And if they violate those contracts, they could be sued by the city for breach of contract. Um, that's my position. I've asked around on that. And there's many people that, that concur with that philosophy. So they can't walk away from it. They're leaving that to the courts to handle because they can't. They did what they were responsible to do. Um, the scarier part is the um, the scarier part would be the active worker under 65 retirees. Um, so Beverly Arshin, I um, have not looked at my emails. I do believe we may have hit that 250. I will I will double check over the weekend and put up a final thermometer on that fundraiser. Um, why can't I watch on TV? It's easier. Well, and if you have a device and you have a smart TV, you can actually beam it to your television because I sometimes beam what's on my cell phone to my TV, including photos. Um, don't worry, I'll end up having to put this back up later if your video isn't working. Has Mulgrew reached out to talk to you yet? Oh, no, Janet, what are you smoking? I mean, he hasn't even sent me smoke signals. I did say uh, send a thank you out on Sunday, but he did not um he did not uh he did not do anything. Nope. Ramona, this is interesting. For the first time video freezes on me and audio has gone in and out. I don't know. Are you guys all in a storm or something or No, no way is Randy reaching out to you. I spoke to Randy two years ago, a year and a half ago, Laura. She's not, um, she, she asked me for information. 
don't have a TV I watch on phone or computer or iPad. That's all right. Um, what happened at the emergency MLC meeting? So the that was the week last week. The MLC meeting uh, was called last week because they were trying to raise the dues coming from the unions to the MLC because the MLC is in debt. Uh, they've been paying the attorney Michael uh, Alan Klinger for like Alan Klinger for like two years, like almost a million dollars a year. And um, because of that, and they also hired consultants that they were costing out the health care plan on for the active workers on the MA plan. They were doing, they had hired consultants, they hired a uh, policy research group, they hired Milliman, and they hired Siegel. They owe $700,000 to Siegel Consulting. And they're not planning to pay them, and I think, till next year because they don't have the money to do it. So they wanted a, a dues raise of $1.10 a member. So every union would have to pay an additional $1.10 a year per member um, to subsidize the Municipal Labor Committee. And some unions were afraid, especially the smaller ones that just don't have the money to do that, what that would do to them. So there was a lot of pushback on that. They tried to call a vote, which I, you know, we've been trying to teach the unions do not just 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 succumb to a vote because they they ask for a vote. You should take that information back to your e-boards and ask them to review it. Um, so they did not. They did not have that vote last week. They they ended up deciding that the board would. Um, review some of the decisions, uh, suggestions that were made to them and how else that they can manage that money to be able to start to pay off that $700,000 debt. What is the Campion case and what are the two copay cases? Karen, I explained that a few minutes ago. I explained all three. So go back and rewind when this is over. You're welcome, uh, Nancy, and you're welcome, Beverly. Hi, John. Hope you're doing well. Um, so that was the basis for the emergency meeting was to try to raise the dues to pay that debt. What other questions you just got? Okay. Um, so little updates for those that did not, um, that do not know. So I now co-host a radio show every Friday morning at 7 a.m. on WBAI with Juliana Forlano, and it is the um, Healthcare Labor Hour. Uh, so this morning we had our show. I did post, uh, when I post in the morning or the day before, we will start to um, post the link to listen live. And then when the show's over and they upload the uh, the playback, we'll post the playback or Mike usually posts the playback so that you guys can listen to it. Um, so Paul, right now we're collecting ad there we're collecting people on that chart. If you registered where we will start to do that soon, meetings will be coming in the very near future. Um, I can't tell you how CSA is reacting to it because CSA doesn't talk to us. Henry, Henry spoke to me once at a social event a year ago and hasn't communicated up back with us at all. What's happening with DC 37 and the MLC Nancy Stitham, what do you mean about what's happening with them? Why are the Yankees so bad? I'm a Mets fan, Inez. I can't answer that question. <laughs> Thank you, Marsha. Can the MLC member unions deny the request? They can, but remember, Michael, it's the same weighted vote. If if the, basically if DC 37 and the UFD vote for it, they're stuck because the unions are not changing the weighted vote. Like we keep asking them to call a motion to change the bylaws. That's all I have to do. 
So you started to say something about the under 65 retiree. So the under 65 retiree health plan is the same as the active worker plan. And that plan to me is concerning because Mulgrew says that he was walking away from everything, right? When you saw the press release and the news one and whatever. Um, and that is concerning. But then uh, at the MLC meeting, he was basically telling people that, he was frustrated with how they were doing the handling the RFP process. If they change the RFP process, he'll get behind it. If they don't, he doesn't want to proceed. He's not really going to have a choice on that because if you remember, there was an MLC meeting in September of 2022 where the unions were told uh, that there was an agreement that I guess the steering committee had come to with um, Martin Scheinman, who was in the agreement to, to to resolve disputes. And in the dispute resolution, the Scheinman could get involved to make sure that what was the intent was honored. And if you remember in 2022, what was said at the time was because of our injunction and we got to stop them, from forcing us into the first Medicare Advantage plan, then the theory was that the city would, if you remember that line, I know I have a clip of it somewhere. Well, the city would eat the billion dollars that it's owed if they tried to change the administrative code, if they, you know, let the the court handled the Medicare Advantage, and if they pursued an RFP to replace the active worker under 65 plan, they had to do those three things. And if they could, then the city would eat the billion dollars that it was owed. And they have to do that to keep their end of the bargain. And it would just be that everything else that they tried to do that wasn't in their power didn't happen to come to fruition for them not to be in breach of contract. I think that's that's probably what's going on. You need some rest. Take a breath. We need you for all that's coming. I know, Sandra, this is crazy. I met a retiree who did not know. Well, Serena Mia, there are plenty of retirees that don't know what the heck is going on. There's still a lot of them. I mean, we're only like 30,000 people on this Facebook page. Yeah. This is happening to many Floridians I'm talking to. Get them to join our Facebook page. We are going to try to see that maybe next week, knock on wood, we're able to unveil that new database that people could just join right from there. Um, hopefully we can roll that out next week. If not, my goal is within the next two weeks. So keep you posted because that will also become our major payment platform um, it is a secured system that allows you to make make donations right on it rather than having to go through all that other stuff and mail checks that take forever to get. We're literally getting checks this week from April. It, it's the most insane thing. The contract calls for a payment to Aetna if the deal falls apart. Peter, I do remember something like that. I have to go back and look at it, but it is a 10,000-page contract, and I remember we had like a dozen people a dozen retirees going through it, and it did take a little bit of a while to go through. I know. Uh, Jim, yes, all the unions are asleep because they were listening to the largest unions and the attorney tell them what that they should do, and they did what they were told, and none of them dug into it none of them performed any research and they just they just they just did what they were told i mean the discussions that they had were periphery they never got into the details of anything we send them stuff so i want you to know let me see if i can quickly um if i can quickly look we sent them an email uh, Wednesday morning at like, I don't know, six or 7 a.m. And I sent it to 150 people. It was an email. When the last time I checked, more than half of them opened it, but I also sent a video. And out of 150 people, only six people watched my video. So no one else could see it but the unions. 
and only six people to date have watched it. Today is Friday, and I sent it to them Wednesday morning. They're not listening. They don't want to. They just don't. Some people called me. Others, they just, they don't want to hear it. So, did I miss any questions? Just want to know what, Will I be alive when this is over? I doubt it. I think I'll be missed. You absolutely will be missed. Okay, so let's talk about two more things. Thank you guys for sending the emails to Nassau County. Um, that will end tonight. I will take that link down. We'll close it at midnight. Um, Scott is on here. You'll see Scott Cohen on here. He's one of, he's one of our uh, leaders of the Nassau County fight. So that was that's going really well tonight. That campaign will end. And Thank you for sending the emails to Delaware legislators. You sent emails to uh, 63 uh, different legislators in their in the Delaware State Senate and Assembly, and both of their legis uh, legislation, they had two different legislations, they both got passed. So Delaware is now secured from being forced into an MA plan. <laughs> So I will, uh, I believe I did close those off uh, yesterday as well. So yes, yay, Delaware. <laughs> yep, we're, we are racking up a few nationwide um, uh, wins here. And actually too, Andre, there you are. Andre is our Delaware retiree. Thank you, Andre, Andre, thank you. Um, so Anne Ray was also on our uh, radio show this morning, and if you did not hear, go to our Facebook page where I posted about the show. You can listen to her talk. Um, she's on the bottom half of the hour. Bennett from um, from Retiree Advocate was on the top half of the hour. Is Justin Brannon still with us? Susan, I have no idea. We don't really have a bill before the city council, so they're quite okay with ignoring us. Why do you ask? I am also, maybe we can get a group together. Yeah, you guys can definitely form like an outpost in Florida. Scott says, thank you everyone on behalf of the Nassau retirees. Yay. <laughs> Tommy, off the subject a little, but do you think you can keep, have possible case to sue to keep Medicare? Pre-Medicare, pre, -Medicare, pre I think you mean pre-Medicare retirees. Well, no, if you're a pre, well, actually that's a potential. So if they try to take that, if they try to take Medicare away from pre-Medicare retirees, they would be potentially facing another litigation. So we're, we are keeping our eye on that because you're already retired. Yeah. I live in Florida. My PT office wanted a charge, a copay. I wasn't allowed PT unless I paid. Of course, I checked with GHI. They said no copay for senior care. Finally, they called and was told the same thing. I understand that. That's why you need to ask them to call and confirm that right there in the office. Can you do me one favor, Yvette? Can you ask the office if it's not on your card? Can you look at your card and see if it's on there? Can you tell me, does it say on your card that you have copays? If it does, you really should be traveling with that letter that's on Emblem's website, that's also in your Emblem portal that says there are no copays, that they are suspended. If it's not on your card and it, it says this says nothing about copays, you need to ask the doctor, what is making you charge me a copay when there is no copay on my card? Okay? So Yvette, that's your homework. Yeah, Tommy, pre-Medicare retirees would potentially have a litigation as well. Scott Coalition. So, whew, so okay. So we formed a New York State Coalition of Public Service Retirees, of all retirees that, thank you, Mike, I just saw that pop up. Thank you for that. Um, Mike just put the emblem letter in the chat so you can see it there. Um, we did form a coalition of New York State retirees, and these are this will help us with our legislation get passed. 
my card does not show a copay. Then on Monday, can you put yourself a note to call the doctor and say, if your card doesn't say that you have a copay, what is making them charge you a copay? Because that would be interesting to find out why they're asking you. Anything new on Floyd? No. Nope. Is there's a disgusting MA, MA ad that makes its round on Spectrum One. It also caught my attention because they literally gave their senior the name Mary Ann. What? <laughs> okay, Laura, I need to see that video. <laughs> I need to see that video. You're going to have to videotape that and messenger it to me. Who's the company? <laughs> That's okay. They don't know what the hell's going to hit them come open enrollment. How can those of us in Florida connect? Um. So, Gwen, here's my suggestion on that. Since you guys are here on Facebook, um. You might want to start a Facebook messenger chat and just start to add people to it that are in your circle. That way you can communicate with each other. Now, you can also shut off notifications on there because if, if you guys keep starting to messenger each other, it'll just start dinging like crazy. The moderators could definitely tell you about that. But we can show you how to mute those um, notifications, and then that could be your one central place to communicate with each other in Florida. Um, Ellen, the UFT Facebook page, or at least one of them, has a defamatory rant about Mary and what to do. Um, I believe that might be the Unity page, and that might be old. Um, but, hey, they lost two elections, so I don't care. <laughs> um, Anthem has replaced blue replaced the cards emblem. Yeah, so the emblem we've we mentioned we've said this a few times and we did a video on it and it is also in our email. The only thing that changed is the em, uh, empire turned into Anthem. That's it. There's nothing else that changes. They just changed names. Empire now identifies as Anthem. The copay, the doctor's office probably had an old insurance card photo in their computer. She should ask them to scan her card. That's a good idea, Renee. So just ask the doctor to rescan. But I would like to find out why the doctor asked. If it is in the system as an old card with a copay, that might be a really good answer. So good point, Renee. It shows copays on the card and online when they look it up. My card doesn't have it. They called, the company called Nervair told me that, but they said that because you have Medicare, it tells them no copays. It's strange. Okay. Yeah, just travel around with that letter and then make them call Emblem while you're there. Because they're wrong. Make sure that they make sure you travel with that letter. Keep it in your glove box. They said it was in their computer. So ask them if they could just rescan your card with no copays on it if that helps, or does it come up in their system from Emblem? Because then we'll need to address that with Emblem. Take a photo and keep it in your phone. That's a good point too, Sky. <laughs> I don't know, Paula, what part people of Florida are from, but we can, um, we can, let me see if I can start, like, I don't really want to start a whole separate page or a separate chat. If you guys want to talk to each other from Florida, create a, create a chat just for you guys in Florida and keep it off this page. Anthem left messages on my landline. My claim was denied. 
called back today and told me it was approved. Problem, they did not specify by name if it was for myself or my son. Yeah, it's just general incompetence on their part. The new emblem card that came with the anthem card specifically says no copays. I did not get a new emblem card. That If there was only one card that came in with Anthem, and I've already put mine in my wallet, um, that's just your hospitalization card. It is not an, I did not get a new emblem card. If you did, you're lucky. The Anthem cards don't say, yeah, I, I didn't see that either. It is. It would be an emblem card that you may have received that would say no copays. And you can also log into your portal. In the portal, it should say no copays. Should. If it doesn't, we need to address that. Um, the Anthem lawsuit against the city. Is the Anthem lawsuit against the city actually going to... Um, is that the one that's under seal, Ellen? Because I have no idea. It's sealed. Just the hospital. Yeah, that's all I got too, Janice. No new emblem card, just hospitalization. Yep, that's what I got. All right. Yeah, the M the it's the Empire case. Um Let me see if I could. Yes, that Empire case is sealed. In my portal, it shows copays on the card. I never got cards with copays. Yeah, I remember. Anthem is not emblem. Yep, I got two cards. Call them on Monday. Okay. Yes, the city appealed our decision. Thank you, Mike. Yes, Carol. You can go back to the beginning of this video. When it ends, you can go back and watch it. Um, okay. I think that's all I got, and I'm not seeing any more questions. So... Um, I'm going to leave this video up here. I will upload it to YouTube and make this uh, public either today or tomorrow. I'll send out an email. I'll be giving you the information for the Friday morning radio show. I figured if I got to be up, you got to be up. <laughs> Come and have coffee. We'll put the phone number up because if you do want to call in, you're welcome to do so when we do open up call in. Sometimes we don't. Um yeah. Run for president. What are you crazy, Pop Pop Charlie? Only you guys know me. Nobody else does. And you think I want a bunch of people yelling at me? <laughs> You're welcome, Janet. Thank you, Marianne. You're welcome. Peter, you'll see me before 4th of July. Um, so we'll we're gonna um I'll update you for the fundraiser when I finally get into my email to see where we're at. Say your prayers for our bookkeeper because he's not feeling good. He's um, He is actually sick and he'll probably be uh, recovering for about a week, but everything is still being taken care of. So we're not, we're not worried. Uh, the mail is still slow. We're still getting mail from like two months ago. So hang in there with that. We're gonna try to move those donations electronic. Hopefully we can, um, re uh, you know, reveal that new process next week. If not, my goal is maximum within the next two weeks. That make it easy for everybody. Um, I want to thank the moderators for uh, helping us on our page and and answering your questions. Thank all of you guys for being patient with us and listening and doing all of the homework assignments that we put out this week. Keep those donations coming in because we do have four oral arguments to prepare for. Our attorneys have many briefs to be writing. The brief for the Bentkowski appeal that the mayor just filed last night is due July 8th. So he has a lot of homework to do in this next week. 
Um, so we want to make sure that we could still take care of our, our obligations. So keep that coming in. Thank you guys for everything. We truly do appreciate you and all of your support. Have a great weekend. And I will send out that email by tomorrow, I promise, with the audio from the radio show from this morning, where we talked to Bennett Fisher and Ann Ray from Delaware and uh, give you a little tidbits here and there and update you on the court cases. So have a great weekend. I will see you guys next week. Have a great day. Ciao.